So the German uh, cabinet is due to agree on tighter sector targets for carbon emission curbs today. The move follows a court ruling last month that a 2019 law did not go far enough to ensure climate protection. Germany is also seeking to gain an edge in low carbon technologies and this includes speeding up the shift to battery powered cars. But battery production is currently still dominated by Asian companies. Time for some car manufacturers to take matters into their own hands. The car manufacturer Tesla will soon be building hundreds of thousands of electric cars here near Berlin and will also create a production facility for batteries. According to company boss Elon Musk, it will be the largest in the world, but it'll face stiff competition in the battery production market. German manufacturer VW plans to build six battery cell factories in Europe in the next few years and is working on introducing a uniform battery technology. So far, car manufacturers have been dependent on a handful of cell producers based in Asia, led by the Chinese group CATL, which, according to the forecast, will hold 17% market share in 2023. In second place is LG Chem from South Korea, with 13%, followed by another Chinese company. It was only on Tuesday that Japanese car maker Nissan announced that it would pool the production of batteries for their electric cars together with its French partner Renault. The car manufacturers want to reduce their costs by using a standardised battery technology. And everybody hopes to gain competitive advantage. And for more, I'm joined by Peter Fintel, Director of Technology and Innovation at Cap Gemini Engineering in Munich. Good to have you with us. Now, if car makers start investing in battery technology, does this mean that electromobility is now finally starting to be taken seriously? Good morning, Monica. Absolutely, it's fair to say that. Uh, I think we have seen with the sales figures of, for electric vehicles in the past year and also in the quarter one of that year that electromobility is finally taking off both in Europe and in other markets in the world. So having the battery as the new heart of the vehicle, it is a very wise choice for uh, OEMs, for manufacturers to take uh, their matter in their own hands. Now, the pandemic has, of course, shown how vulnerable supply chains can be. Do you think that this is the only reason why some car makers want to become independent from their Asian partners? Well, uh, on one hand, the, uh, the, the, the pandemic, the chip crisis, they have shown us how fragile global supply chains can be. But it's much more than that. Uh, being the battery, you know, it's the single most expensive component of a vehicle today, and it will uh, stay that for the next years. So it's a matter of strategic import importance to master that part of the value chain and also to use it as a source of competitive advantage. And as we have seen in the Renault Nissan deal, to uh, um, buy-in on uh, scaling effects and economies of scale. Okay, that sounds all very well, but you still need the uh, necessary raw materials. What about dependence on uh, lithium or cobalt? Where will all that come from? I, that's a very good question. Uh, if you just look at the prices for raw material, made be lithium, cobalt, manganese or nickel, uh, they all have, have skyrocketed. So uh, not only having the necessary contracts in place to secure a steady flow of those raw materials is essential, but also another aspect is to ensure, and this is vital for the OEMs, to ensure that those materials come from ethically correct sources. So uh, a much better grip on the whole supply chain from the raw materials to the final product is required for the OEMs, no matter right. if they run their own cell factories or if they source them. Okay, so there's still work to be done. Peter Fintel there from Cape Gemini Engineering in Munich. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monica. Bye-bye. There's, of course, also hydrogen power and the demand for green hydrogen could skyrocket in the next few years and industry leaders mark it as a low-carbon alternative to fossil fuels. Hydrogen production requires a lot of green electricity, for example, from wind turbines. But the expansion of onshore wind farms in Germany is progressing slowly and functional wind turbines are being decommissioned. So where's the green hydrogen coming from? Have a look. This wind turbine has produced electricity for more than 20 years, but no more. Local farmer Helmut Evers can hardly believe it. The wind turbine near Hanover in Germany's north is no longer profitable because the state will stop paying subsidies. 
the profit per kilowatt hour will be halved. Helmut Evers thinks it's a shame. The wind turbine was technically in great condition because we always kept our maintenance schedule up to date. And the compliance body regularly inspected everything. They determined that it could have continued to operate. Even so, the capacity for green energy is increasing all the time. In plants like this one, this is where hydrogen is produced a CO2-free fuel that is, of course, only green if it's produced with green electricity. André Steinau uses green hydrogen to heat buildings and as fuel for vehicles. He's convinced that this energy form will replace fossil fuels such as oil and gas on a large scale. We're at the beginning of the hydrogen age here. That means the infrastructure that we've just built here was prefabricated. All manufacturers worldwide do it this way. You have to go into serial production to exploit real cost-cutting potential so that these systems will become cheaper. That could happen very quickly, as the demand for green hydrogen is likely to skyrocket. The German government wants entire industries, such as steelworks in Germany, to use only green hydrogen. This is where the wind turbines come into play again. Huge amounts of green electricity from wind turbines are needed to produce hydrogen. However, the expansion of onshore wind has clearly stalled in recent years. There are approval procedures that are clearly too long and too complicated. There is also resistance from residents everywhere to new wind turbines. And then there would be the cancellation of state subsidies for older wind turbines. Helmut Evers doesn't understand this. And without the windmill and the subsidies, he's just a farmer again. Well, for more on all that, uh, let's bring in Chelsea Delaney, who is joining me from the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Good morning, Chelsea. Um, how profitable is it these days to invest in green energy? Well, for financial investors, this has become a hugely profitable strategy. Uh, over the past couple of years here in, in Europe, we've seen investment into to green assets surge by about 300 uh, percent. And this is in part as governments uh, try to make it more expensive to to pollute. So uh, as we move forward in the green transition, uh, investors are, are having to more and more uh, consider climate risk in their portfolio. So we've seen a lot of demand for things like uh, uh, the shares of hydrogen companies, uh, Tesla, electric vehicle makers. Uh, and this has been a, a very profitable strategy. There's been research that's shown uh, green investments have returned more than the overall uh, stock market, uh, especially last year. So for investors, it is a, a profitable move. Well, if it is that attractive, what further incentive could the German government today give in addition? Well, the government uh, is likely to have to spend a lot more money on this transition. It's going to be very expensive. A lot of industries are going to struggle with it. So uh, last year, as part of the, the uh, coronavirus pandemic response, they put forward about 40 billion euros in spending uh, to help energy or help uh, industries transition. They likely are going to have to spend more uh, in the years ahead to, to help uh, with this transition. All right. Chelsea Delaney in Frankfurt. Thank you.